All right, in this video, I'm gonna go through page one of the study guide on exponential and logarithmic functions. So first question, problem number one, consider the function f of x equals three to the x. Part A, make a table of values. So let's start with the table of values first. So this is going to turn into each one of these x values is the exponent for a base three. So this is going to be 3 to the negative 2, 3 to the negative 1, 3 to the 0, 3 to the 1, and 3 squared. All right. Now, I'm actually going to start at the bottom and work my way up to the top because um, I think it actually gets, it's more straightforward to less straightforward if I do it that way. So 3 squared is 9. 3 to the first is 3. Now, those are the two that we're kind of used to. Now, we've talked a few times about this already, but any number raised to the 0 power is actually a 1. All right, so just be aware of that. Now, what happens with these negative powers? There's some strange stuff going on here, but let's take a look at this 3 to the negative 1. This is really 1 over 3 to the first. This negative power actually becomes the reciprocal of what you've got. So we've got 1 over 3 to the first, which would just be better known as 1 third. There's a 1 up there in the numerator. Same thing with 3 to the negative 2. The rewrite on this one would be 1 over 3 squared, which would just translate into 1 ninth. All right. So just be aware of that. If you put it in a calculator, your calculator will give you some decimal answers. That'll work as well. Um, but just understand that what these negative powers are actually doing is creating a fractional answer or a reciprocal answer, um, and it's not actually creating a negative answer. Now, I'm going to, so that's the tables filled out, I'm going to graph f of x. So each one of these, I'm going to take the value in um, the x value, and this little value that I wrote in purple, and those are going to become my ordered pairs. So negative 2, 1 ninth is really, really small, and it's really close to the x-axis. Uh, negative 1, 1 third, all right, 0, 1, 1 Three, and now we start exploding with growth rate two, nine. I think I counted that out right, I did. Um, and so now I'm gonna graph this. What I wanna be careful about is, this is pretty obvious to see what's going on to the right here, right? It is clearly going up to infinity. Uh, to the left side here, I wanna be careful because it might you might think it's gonna slip down, um, but these values, while they get smaller and smaller and smaller, get closer to the x-axis, but it doesn't actually touch or go through the x-axis. That's your asymptote for this problem. Um, so I'm actually not even going to draw the whole way over because it basically keeps getting closer and closer to the x-axis. So that's f of x. It does not say to label it, but it can't hurt to, so let's go ahead and call that f of x. All right, now that's part A. Let's take a look at part B. Make a table of values and graph for f inverse of x. Now, there's nothing written in the table of values, and it's done on purpose that way because I don't want to give you x values. I actually want you to take these values from the original problem. So here's your x, here's y, x, y, and I want you to reverse them or switch them. So all of these x values, right, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, those are going to become your y values, your f inverse values. And then all of these function values, the 1 ninth, 1 third, these function values are going to become your x values. So 1 ninth, 1 third, 1, 3, and 9. Now that I have the points, I can go ahead and graph them. Okay, so make sure you understand that the inverse function, you're just going to flip the x's and y's, right? That's kind of important. Now, it's kind of hard to figure out where 1 ninth is, but you're going to basically just barely be past 0 here on the x-axis. And we're going to drop down to negative 2 here. We're going to do 1 third, negative 1, 1, 0, yeah, 1, 0, uh, 3, 1, and then 9, 2. All right. Now, in the same way, 
that this purple graph over here for the exponential growth is getting closer and closer and closer to the x-axis as we go to the left, right, as we approach negative infinity. This graph, this is called the logarithmic graph, it's going to get closer and closer to the y-axis, but not actually touch it or cross it as you move again towards zero here. So we're going to come from here, go through the little points that we drew. Not a bad graph, if I do say so. All right. Uh, again, you don't have to label it for this particular problem, but it's always a good habit to get into the, uh, to just label your graphs. All right. So we've got A, we've got B graphed. Let's do part C, which is the table of characteristics. So we want to look at these key features. Now, if it helps you keep referencing the picture, I might go back and forth a little bit. Um, all right. So f of x, we want to talk about the domain. Domain are your possible x values, how far to the left to how far to the right. And that particular graph is going to go from negative infinity to infinity. All, right? All possible x values are fine. Range-wise, right, our range, we never actually hit 0, but it's every value above 0. So we're going to say our range is from 0 to infinity. Now, I'm actually going to stop here for a second and flip over to the uh, inverse function, f inverse of x, because these two values that we just found, the domain and the range for the function, are going to invert. So this domain becomes the range of the inverse, and this range is the domain of the inverse. So that's from 0 to infinity. And if we look at the graph, right, how far to the left does this graph go? Well, it goes to 0-ish. It never actually touches 0, which is why we use the parentheses. And then to the right, it goes to infinity. If we look at the uh, range, and we're talking low to high, right, it definitely goes to negative infinity. And while it's very slow growth, this is going to keep getting higher and higher and higher. It just happens very slowly. Um, but it's still going to go to infinity. So that's the domain and range for both of our functions. Let's talk about the asymptotes. In the exponential graph, your asymptote is this horizontal line here. It's the x-axis. That horizontal line has the equation y equals 0. But remember, everything about the um, function and the inverse, we're going to switch the x's and y's. So instead of y equals 0, the inverse would have the asymptote x equals 0. And x equals 0 is this vertical line right here, better known as the y-axis. Okay, And again, we're going to approach it, but never actually touch it. Uh, I'm going to keep... Eh, I'm just going to slide up a little bit higher here. <laughs> Eventually, I'm going to have to start kind of moving back and forth between them. Um, X-intercept, it's a little bit difficult to tell, um, but this purple graph right here never actually touches the x-axis, right? We keep approaching it, but we don't touch it. So x-intercept, none. Y-intercept, we've got this point, this ordered pair right here, or you can see it on the actual graph. It is the ordered pair 0, 1. Now, for the logarithmic function, remember everything inverted. So this ordered pair down here, we're going to flip the point, and we get the point 1, 0. Well, 1, 0 is an x-intercept, not a y-intercept. Okay, it's an x-intercept. And if we look at the y-axis here, we're never going to actually touch the y-axis. It comes close to it. We're never going to touch it. So that is no y-intercept for our original logarithmic function. All right, we got two more bits. We've got the uh, interval of increase or decrease. And if we look at the exponential function, this is slow growth. It's really slow on this left part right here. Actually, I'll zoom in a little bit. Right, slow, 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 slowly getting increasing, increasing. And all of a sudden, you kind of hit this hockey stick of just drastic growth. But this particular function is increasing across the entire domain. So we'll talk about that in just a second in terms of what to write. I'm going to slide over to the logarithmic function. And we want to look from left to right and see what's happening. So as we start here on the left, growing, 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 increasing, increasing, 
we're going to get really, really slow increases as we move to the right, but it's increasing as well. So in the table, let me go ahead and slide down here. For the exponential function, we're going to say it is increasing. You do have to tell me if it's increase or decrease. And it's from negative infinity to infinity. The logarithmic function is also an increasing function. All right, so increase or increasing. However, it is only increasing across its domain, which is from zero to infinity, okay? Last piece here, and then we'll be done with this page and this problem. All right, kind of nice to know. Uh, so end behavior, we were gonna do two parts. As X approaches infinity, and as X approaches negative infinity. All right, now our original function here was called f of x. So we're gonna talk about what happens to f of x as x approaches infinity, and what happens to f of x as x approaches negative infinity. Now what I look for in the graph is basically what's happening to the left, positive infinity, and what's happening to the right, uh, no, I said that wrong, what's happening to the right is positive infinity, what's happening to the left is negative infinity. I'll know my left from my right eventually. So if I zoom out, Slide over to my graph here. Okay. As I leave the origin and move to the right, I want to see what's happening to my curve. Well, my curve is drastically increasing. It's going to keep going up and up and up and up and up to infinity. All right. Or towards infinity. F of X approaches infinity. Okay. Now, on the other hand, as I leave zero and I move to the left, my curve is getting closer and closer and closer and closer to the x-axis, which means the function value is getting closer and closer and closer to zero, okay? We're getting close to it, but we're never gonna actually touch it. Those fractions are getting smaller and smaller. The decimals are getting smaller and smaller. We're approaching zero, but you'd never actually get there. Kind of a weird situation, I know. All right, now that we know the end behavior for the exponential graph, we can actually use this for the um, logarithmic graph. These x values and these function values are going to switch places. And there's one thing we gotta be careful about with it, and I'll talk about that in just a second. So as x approaches, now I'm going to pull this infinity, I know this is going to be difficult because it's infinity and infinity here, but as x approaches infinity, the inverse function also approaches infinity, okay? I just flipped these two, but it doesn't really matter because they're the same thing for exponential growth. Decay is a little different, okay? Now these two I'm also going to flip, but I got to be careful when I do this. So as x approaches zero, however, this is where I'm gonna pause, and I'm gonna go up to the graph. X is approaching zero, but this curve only exists on the right side of zero, right? There's nothing over here on the left side, so this is only on the right side. Because this curve is only on the right side, we actually have to designate X is approaching zero from the positive side. I know that's a little bit weird, but that's because of the way the graph looks, all right? So as x approaches zero from the positive side, the inverse function is approaching this negative infinity, all right? So when you have an exponential function and you have a logarithmic function, all of the x's and y's have traded places. That's because they're inverses of each other. And the inverse functions, when you figure out one table of values, right, you can get the other table by just flipping the x and y values. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close the video here for this one. We will have a separate video for the other couple of pages. Let me know if you have any questions or concerns.